And next up, we have The Boneless Dungeon Rebirth, written by David uh, Devin Osplund. It is 204 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. In a world of sword and sorcery, Breck died and was reborn as a dungeon core, a specialized living gem and in charge of creating and managing a dungeon. Unlike most dungeons, he was handicapped with the inability to create bones, the very building blocks that comprise most living creatures. Breck just wants his life back, his humanity, and will do whatever it takes to achieve his goal. Even if that means killing the hordes of adventurers that want to plunder his depths so he can gain the power to transcend. Zack, a new adventurer, is given the quest to find the source of the new cosmic energy that has made itself known. The same cosmic energy that creates the dungeon cores. It's the lucky break he's been waiting for his whole life. But he'll face opposition that will see him dead before they let him complete his quest. Despite his inability to create monsters with bones, can Breck gain enough essence to rank up and become a human again, or will he be forever trapped as a dungeon? Will Zack be able to live long enough to complete his quest while the other guild members are hunting him? What happens when Zack and Brack's paths collide? Find out in this all this and more in this exciting game lit the Little Bitty Dungeon Rebirth. So there we go. Um this is actually two stories that feel very separate for the most part, up until like a, a late stage in the story. Um, one, and, and the time in the story is actually split equally between them. Um, one for the dungeon core, one for the adventure, which is in the, the novel description. Um, and the game mechanics in the story are fairly limited. So it is more gamelet than it is little PG, uh, being limited to um, essence ranks, uh, maybe some adventurer ranks, um, and a kind of a soft cultivation system. Okay, on the dungeon side of things, um, the story starts out a little bit slow, um, with a little too much time, in my opinion, um, explaining how the core can extend its essence just a few inches from its tiny core. And one of the things, I guess, um, in the dungeon core part that kind of bothered me a little bit was just how the main character in the story kind of had to be told everything. Um, it, it's one of those things that made the progression on his behalf feel guided. Um, and whether that's the intention of the author or not, it, it kind of drew some, it kind of lowered my enjoyment just because I, I would rather have seen the core kind of discover things on its own instead of always having this, um, I don't want to say AI companion, but this, uh, a companion who is kind of just info dumping on him most of the time. And then he's like, oh, okay, what do I do now? And the companion does the next thing. And he's like, well, okay, what do I do now? And and it's not like that he didn't do it and and do some experimentation on his own, but a lot of that early section just felt a little slower and, and not um, driven by the main character's choices in itself. And that was just something that kind of drew some um, enjoyment away from me, unfortunately. Um, and then this is kind of especially just a little bit annoying because the main character and in, 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 in how it's set up is an intelligent character. He's not... He's not from this world initially. He's from our world. Actually, a future world from ours, uh, where like the Earth is overcrowded and stuff. Um, and his his backstory is kind of today. He's really good at analyzing data. He works for a big corporation and he helps, you know, um, figure out stocks and, and he makes a better percentage than anyone else. And so it, it seems like he's in, uh, intelligent, but is also decently educated. And none of that really seemed to translate once he was kind of reborn like and and it's not like he didn't retain his old memories he knew he was going to human he knew he was from a different world he had those memories but none of that kind of um was used so he felt a lot more like a blank slate with his actions but his backstory suggests it, it should be otherwise still small small thing for me um also the dungeon core um theme is supposed to be boneless dungeon core um but it kind of defaults to insects from us astray um and i was a little disappointed by that just because there are a lot of other boneless creatures in the world even the natural world um and i understand how why it defaults to insects because of the, the local terrain in where the dungeon is at um but I've, I've read other dungeon core stories with insects as a theme and and so it didn't feel particularly fresh to me um, if you haven't read that theme before, this is probably going to land a little bit better for, for you because it'll feel more different. Um, and again, there's the pacing in the beginning part is a little bit slow because um, you don't get your first five material already 20% of the novel and you don't get your first aspect of the dungeon creation stuff until you're almost a third of the way through. So again, kind of a slow start. Um, the other half of the story is about a new adventurer, which is not a bad setup for the story. Um, it, it does provide uh, an opportunity to see some world building done in the larger world because of course the dungeon core itself is a static entity um and that's not uncommon in in in, in a lot of dungeon core stories here 
some of the plot line with that new adventure felt a little bit forced. And I think I've mentioned this about some of the author's writings before. Um, like the plot lines feel forced. I'm, I, as a writer, I'm like, oh, I understand that you're, you're plotting a story and you have worked out where you, you want your character to go. But as a reader, when I see the strings, when I'm like, oh, that's I'm, you're going to do a thing like that. And he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Um, that 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 sometimes less my because lessens my doing because it was like you're forcing the character in a particular direction instead of I don't know letting them <laughs> naturally release give make me feel like it's a natural choice uh, for the story path. So um, one of the bigger issues here was for me um, kind of the guild conflict in the story um, where the other members of the character this is something that's in all descriptions so it's not spoilery um, are looking to murder the main character because he has this rare quest. Um, I'm going to attempt to find the dungeon essentially. Um, and I just didn't make sense to me why they need, would want to kill him for that. Cause they wouldn't give him the quest and nobody knows in advance that it's going to be a dungeon. And the story is kind of set up where like he can just group with whoever he wants to, and they would all kind of get rewarded for that particular quest. As a matter of fact, that's something that he does, um, in, in the story. Um, so it's, 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 it kind of never made sense to me and I get why it exists to create conflict and, and a reason and a motivation my character kind of hurry and do his thing. Um, and, and but it just kind of like, again, felt a little bit forced as to like the setup for that question in, in, in the first place. Um, but there are good apps to that story. Again, the author does a pretty decent job of doing some world building, especially with a um, particular, uh, race that, that's shown off into the story. I'm not, I'm trying to spoil it. Um, I like, liked that backstory and that world being, that was done there. Um, and even though this, the, the two storylines do exist in the same world, they actually don't actually cross until like the very end of the story. And even then it's super brief, which is, I was a little disappointed. I was ex really expecting them to come across, um, each other very a lot sooner because the way it's set up now, it almost was like they could have been different novels, um, and and just kind of had a small crossover event, um, and it, it just they just didn't feel connected until again near the end, which which is when that happens. Um, overall, not a poorly written story. It uh, technical writing levels is, is fine. Um, it has its funny moments, and again, I like the world building here a little bit. But overall, it just didn't kind of click for me. Um, I read a lot of Dungeon Crawl stories. I think that might be influencing what I'm feeling here for this one, just because I've seen the insect theme before. Um, uh, and while the author is, is probably going to expand his bonus dungeon kind of theme to something, other things that are different later in the series, um, that's kind of what it is here. Um, and so I didn't really feel like it, it brought something new and, you know, super amazing or different to, to, to the genre. Um, and the adventure side of this, um, kind of barely interacted with the dungeon core, um, dungeon at all. And so that's why I came for the show. It wasn't for just a regular fan, you know, um, slice of life adventure story. I, th I thought it was just, this is going to be mostly dungeon core with like, you know, some, some interaction with the outside world through this adventure line. And it kind of just into, two different stories that it kind of existed in the same novel dungeon core on its own adventurer side on its own. And eventually they meet for a super brief period. And I was like, Oh, that's okay. I, I get it's fine, I guess, but it what didn't really connect for me. So, um, for me, it's a score of six out of 10. Again, didn't quite work for me, but you might enjoy it, especially if you haven't read a dungeon core story with a insect theme before it'll feel a little fresher for you. Uh, but for me, the boneless dungeon rebirth gets a score of a six out of 10.